Hi everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and in this video series we're making the Aster handbag. Uh, before you start, you'll want to of course print out your pattern or perhaps you're making the paper version of the pattern. Uh, what you'll want to do before you start is read through the entire pattern um, just so that you know uh, what to expect. Um, before you get started, if you'd like, uh, you can download uh, the cutting chart for the pattern, which is available for free um, through my Facebook group. It is uh, located in the files section of the group and I'll make sure to include uh, a link to my Facebook group in the description below this video so you can download the chart. It's very handy because it shows you exactly all the pieces that you need to cut from the various materials used in the construction of the bag. Now, before you start, you need to prepare your pattern pieces. Um, there is a slight difference in the pattern pieces if you're using uh, the paper version uh, versus the uh, downloadable PDF file. Uh, if you're using the PDF file, you will need to tape together two pieces, the twist lock panel D piece and the twist lock panel Peltex piece. So you just um, print them out and then tape them together at this center line. Uh, you just line them up, don't overlap them and then tape them together. You will also need to print out two copies of the body A pattern piece and then tape them together at the red dotted line at the center. And then I like to cut out the, uh, the shape of my connectors and this will help a lot with the placement of your connectors during the construction. And a couple of extra things that I like to do is to print out two copies of certain pieces like the bottom E piece. I, I printed out two pieces because um, I find it uh, easier to not cut this piece on the fold, especially if you're using a thicker material uh, like cork or uh, a thicker vinyl. And I also do the same for the bottom Peltex piece. I print two copies and then I don't have to cut it on the fold because Peltex is quite um, rigid. Now, if you're using the paper version of the pattern, uh, the only difference really is that you uh, do not have to tape together the two body A pieces because uh, it already, already comes as one full piece. Um, however, you still can cut out um, your connector uh, locations if you wish on your paper pattern. In terms of hardware in Notion, so you're going to need one 8 inch zipper. This is just a dress zipper. You'll need, if you're making the adjustable crossbody strap, you'll need a one inch rectangle slide and two one inch swivels. For the side connectors, uh, also for attaching your adjustable strap, you'll need two one inch D-rings. For your uh, strap connectors for your handles, you'll need four one inch rectangle rings and you'll need four purse feet. If you don't like purse feet, you can leave those out, but I, I love how they look on the bottom of the bag. So you'll only need four of those. Uh, you will also need two magnetic snaps. Uh, they keep there to close the top corners of your top panels. Uh, and they are definitely necessary, otherwise the, your bag won't stay closed. Uh, and then optional is a small turn lock which will go in the center uh, of the top panels. This is optional if you're not comfortable installing turn locks or you just don't like them, you can omit this, but you definitely need the, uh, the magnetic snaps. Uh, other tools you might need is either double-sided tape or fabric glue. You can use whatever you prefer using. And you'll also need some kind of strong glue if you're installing the turn lock. Um, I'm using this type of glue, but you can also use Loctite. Uh, that also works great, whatever you have uh, available to you. I'm now going to go through all of the pieces you need to cut, and I'm going to follow the cutting chart here. 
Um, start with your body A pattern piece and you will need to cut two exterior pieces and two lining pieces. You will need to cut fusible woven interfacing for all four and fuse it to the wrong side. For the exterior, you'll also need to cut two foam interfacing pieces. And um, right now I just have this clipped to the wrong side of my exterior pieces, but we'll be basting this uh, in place shortly. You will need to cut your exterior side panel bottom B pieces. I'm using cork, so I'm not going to add fusible interfacing. You should never fuse or apply high heat to cork uh, because you can damage uh, the finish. And uh, I also cut out two pieces of foam interfacing, which I've just clipped to the wrong side and I'll be basting that in place shortly. You will then need to cut from your exterior side panel top C piece two pieces of exterior fabric and you will need to cut out four fusible woven interfacing pieces. And the reason why you need four is because if you look on the wrong side, you're actually going to be adding one layer of fusible woven interfacing and then you're going to take uh, one of your Peltex pieces that you cut from your side panel top Peltex piece, pattern piece, and you're going to place it over the first layer of woven interfacing. And if you look on the pattern piece, there is a dashed line, it's not very faint, it's not that dark, and it shows you how you should be placing that Peltex piece and also which direction your fabric should be in. So this is going to be the top of the piece and this will be the bottom. You want the pointy end of your Peltex piece to be facing the top edge. Once you have your Peltex in place, you're going to take the second piece of fusible woven interfacing and fuse it over top so that your Peltex piece is, stays in place on the wrong side here. Set these aside for now. From your top panel D pattern piece, you need to cut four pieces of uh, your exterior two fabric or vinyl or cork, whatever you've decided to use. Um, if you're using fabric, you also need to cut fusible woven interfacing and fuse it to the wrong side. But I'm using cork, which doesn't require it. Then you will also need to cut from your top twist lock panel Peltex piece, your, your top panel Peltex piece, you're gonna need to cut two pieces of uh, Peltex. From your uh, bottom E piece, which is this piece here, you will need to cut one lining piece with matching fusible woven interfacing, fused to the wrong side. You will need to cut one exterior fabric. Now here I'm using cork again, so I'm, it's not interfaced, but if you're deciding to use fabric, you need to cut your interfacing and fuse it to the wrong side. You will then also cut one piece of foam interfacing. And then from your bottom Peltex piece, you cut one piece of Peltex. From your corner overlay piece, you're going to cut four pieces of your exterior two fabric, so your vinyl or your cork. It has to be a non-fraying material for the overlays. And you must also cut two sets mirror image. So they're, they're identical, but they're in re they're the reverse image. From your interior side panel F, you want two pieces cut from your lining fabric with a fusible woven interfacing fused to the wrong side of both. Now, um, in this video, I'm not installing the long john connectors. I'm using uh, the vinyl connector option. So using the strap connector pattern piece, I've cut four out of cork and then using the strap connector Peltex, I've cut four uh, pieces of Peltex and you need to glue the Peltex pieces to the wrong side of each 
connector and they're the same shape but slightly smaller which makes it easy to figure out where you need to place them. So these all need to be uh, glued or taped to the wrong side. Now to cut your slip pockets, this is a question I've asked often. You're going to take the body A pattern piece and you see this dashed line? This will become your fold line. Now typically a fold line is vertical, but in this case we're going to use this as a horizontal fold line. So you'll take your lining fabric, now I'm using the same fabric as my exterior fabric just so I don't confuse anyone, and you fold it in half. So your direction of your print is in this direction, and you fold it in half, wrong sides together, so that your fold is along the top edge. And then you place your pattern piece and your fold, your, the fold of your fabric should be at this dash line and then you cut along the sides and the bottom to make your slip pocket pieces. And you can, you'll cut two of these. Now for your zippered pocket, I made the pocket a bit differently in this pattern than I do in my more recent patterns. Uh, with this, uh, the version of this zipper pocket in this pattern, it's a little bit outdated. You can see the zipper tape inside the pocket and now um, I prefer to do it a different way. So in addition to your 10 inches wide by 8 inches high lining pieces that are both interfaced, you will also cut a zipper facing piece. This piece needs to be the same width, so 10 inches wide, but it needs to be two and a half inches high, and it should have fusible woven interfacing uh, fused to the wrong side as well. Now, for the shoulder straps or the, the handles, I'm going to be using cork. So I have two cork pieces uh, that are 23 inches long and 4 inches wide. So I have two of them. Since I'm using cork, I'm not going to interface them. But if you decide to make yours out of fabric, you will need to cut interfacing and fuse it to the wrong side. Um, a crossbody strap. I do have my... I have cut the pieces, but... Um, I haven't interfaced them yet. Um, I needed, my pieces were too short, so I'm going to sew some strips together to make my strap long enough, and then I'm going to fuse the interfacing to the wrong side. Now, um, the length of the crossbody strap is really personal preference. Um, you can use a strap on an existing bag and measure it and figure out how long you would like to make yours. And then uh, the last pieces that I have, and I believe I've lost my side connector pieces. Oh, here they are. So my side connector pieces also in cork, so I'm not interfacing them. They are eight inches high by two inches wide. And then for my faux piping, which is optional, you don't have to, to add the faux piping. Um, I didn't really have any fabric that coordinated. Um, so I'm going to be using uh, uh, the same navy cork for my faux piping. It won't show as much, but it'll still give it, uh, it'll still be a nice touch. Now I'm going to prepare the bottom of the bag. I'm going to add my Peltex, install my purse feet, um, and then I'm just going to uh, baste my foam to the wrong side of my bottom E piece. So you'll need your bottom E exterior piece your bottom Peltex piece, and the foam interfacing piece you cut from the body e, bottom E uh, pattern piece. So I'm just going to, now you can use fabric glue in this step. Um, that's, that's totally fine, but um, I've decided to use double-sided tape. Now 
Now you can add as much tape as you like. Uh, this tape is pretty strong, so I don't really need to put that much. And then just make sure that it's um, centered so that you have the same amount of space all the way around. Press it into place. Then you're going to use your bottom E pattern piece as a guide. And I've taken my hole punch and I've actually punched out the a hole where at each of the purse feet marks. Now, if you haven't done like uh, I've done and tape two pieces together, you'll want to just flip your pattern piece around to mark the uh, purse feet location on the other side. So now I have my four marks and I'm just going to use my hole punch and punch these out. Now you're punching through the cork layer and the Peltex layer. Okay, and then I'm going to take my purse feet. And then you just push the prong of the purse feet through the hole that you just made. Then turn it over. And then you have to separate the, the prongs and place a washer over them. And then spread your prongs to secure the purse feet in place. Now, normally, um, depending on the construction of the bag, I would uh, tell you to cover uh, the purse feet with, uh, you can use uh, uh, scraps of fusible interfacing and fuse it over top, or you can use tape to cover them, uh, whatever you have on hand. However, because uh, we're placing a piece of foam, the piece of foam is actually going to do a great job at protecting our lining fabric from the metal prongs. So I'm not going to put anything over them in this case. So you just clip the foam interfacing to the wrong side. And now I'm going to go over to my, uh, my zigzag machine. I have a small machine that does a zigzag stitch. And you're going to baste your foam in place to your two body A exterior pieces. Your bottom E piece, well, your assembled bottom now that you've just uh, installed the purse feet. You're going to zigzag stitch all the way around as well as your two exterior side panel bottom B pieces. So all five pieces, you need to baste your foam in place with a zigzag stitch. 